And welcome back to Shanghai with Samsung Galaxy R taking on Team WE. And in game two of the semi-final, Samsung have picked blue side. I don't think that'll be a big surprise to anybody that's been watching. The playoffs has risen in popularity. Papa Smithy, what does Samsung have to do? Where do you think they turn their attention when it comes to pick and ban and how and where they're going to change? So on the blue side, you can set the tempo of the game. Game one, they opted into the Lulu and Jana exchange bans. To me, Samsung Galaxy are kind of an enigma because in LCK, they liked the extended games. They liked opting into things that would, ink, that, that would slow down the pace of the game and allow them to play late game fights. They did not find success from that in the quarterfinals, though. The group stages were up and down playing that style. In the quarterfinals, they tried to attack, Long, attack Longju's early game. Now I'm really left wondering where they see their own strength as, as a team, because it was a new lease on life to me for Samsung Galaxy in the quarters. Now on Blue's side, they really do get to shape the draft, I would say, in the bands. Yeah, and in the quarterfinals, Ambition had so much success on Sujuani. Yep. So I'm really curious to see if they opt into some of those jungle bands or if they actually just prioritize Sujuani above all. They can still ban Galio Jana on the blue side and orchestrate a first pick Sejuani and force that ban in uh, from Team WE, and that's what I expect them to do. Ambition needs to have early game effectiveness, and Sejuani's been his best pick for that. Well, it was unfortunate for Ambition. The game somewhat lost around him in the landing phase in the last few minutes. Uh, of course, Team WE, they banned that Sejuani, Gal Galio, and Lulu as we've covered extensively. And as we jump into game two, picks and bans straight out the gate, Lulu will expect the Callista to follow on the, uh, on the side of Team WE as has been 100% pick demand from groups and now playoffs. So only got a few appearances during the playing stage. So the only reason to me that Samsung Galaxy ban Lulu, because Paul JJ I think is strongest on the likes of Lulu and the Enchanter supports, is they want to have force bans onto Team WE's side. If you see a Lulu blue side, you expect an answering Jana red side mm -hmm. ban along with Callista already. And then the chance of getting that Sejuani first pick rises for the side of Samsung, but I think WE is going to try to set up a trade where, sure, if Sejuani goes one way, Galio may be available for the side of Team WE. So I feel like the bands here, Samsung is setting the tone so far, but WE could try calling their bluff. Yeah, and you really have to wonder what priority the Galio will have. Crown has played it. Very few people have gotten to play it. Faker got to play it five times, and Xie has also been dominant on the pick. So whenever you're leaving up stuff like Sejuani or Janna and Galio, you're leaving up a crew of champions, you wonder what the other team's going to get in return. 37 games played at the World Championships with a 70% win ratio. That's Galio, and still remains off the band pool. <laughs> Zaya joins Cogmore, Tristan, and Callista. That's a lot of 80 carry bands. Yep, it is. But do you know that they don't want to give over Zaya Rakan on the red side from a first pick Sejuani, or I guess now, maybe even a first pick Galio or Janna, because all three of those are available. Team WE, if they're confident enough to play into Janna, which has been dominant, especially recently, they can leave all three up and take the best two. Now it's going to feel like more of a one-for-one -one trade. This, to me, shows you how much Team WE respects Ambitions to yep. Johnny. Because Ben, as we mentioned, has won 12 times on Jana this year, lost zero. And they could have orchestrated the world where they get Sejuani Gallio, but you know what else they can get? Jarvin Gallio. The Galio. big three, even throwing in a big 80 carry pick. Not the Cogmore, of course, so it can't be the full LPL special, but Jarvin and Gallio are those mid game team fight guards. But if they do lock this in, which they will, yep. they're Team WE, this yep. is their favorite combo. Uh, it does give over John a Twitch. So we have two hype, we have the two best hyper carries in Cogmon Twitch and the two best hyper carry enablers in Jana and Lulu. Two of those have been banned. So Samsung can get both of them and control that aspect of the game. And that's why it's so fascinating, Jap, because I see two combos that Samsung will consider. They will consider the Jana Twitch or the Jana Caitlyn. Varus would be on the Caitlyn side where it'd be about lane dominance. This would be Samsung saying, our strength is early to mid. Let's avoid Team WE as a late game team fighting team, which is so counterintuitive because to me, that's Samsung as well. Well, does it also signify what else is going to get locked in the draft? We'll find out shortly as the Varus joins Melzaha in phase one. This job in Galio, by the way, seven wins, two losses when combined together here at Worlds. And the Malzahar makes sense. We have seen it rising as a counter pick, so to speak, to the Galio because of late game scaling. RNG was using it as a counter pick in the first two games against SKT yesterday and then abandoned it. So by no means is this a free win into Galio or no. an amazing counter pick. It's more of a thing that you're okay with doing. And because they pick Varus, Team WE get to have the Twitch. Oh, now this makes phase two picks and bans so, so spicy. We heard the analyst there talking about Shen being let through 
whether the assumption was Cubase Cannon was going to be fine into it or whether they just uh, didn't maybe factor it all together. That was one of the discussions from the previous game. This time around, however, it is a Kha'Zix and it is a Rakan to start things off. So Pivot's already, Cho'Gath was was banned along with the Orianna sings. Champions that stand out in my mind, Papa Smitty. And with confidence riding high, you wonder if WE just returns the Shenwell a second game in a row and has all the tools ready to keep Mystic alive. They basically set up their drafts around this player. A lot of respect being shown to Samsung. Samsung have the ability to once again draft for early to mid game priority, but the game went away from that priority. It went against expectation with Condi Smart jungling in game one and the bot lane falling apart. The reliability of Varus and Janna isn't the reliability of the Caitlyn duo, I would say, in terms of taking early turrets. So, so many questions, even though we're already into the second round of the draft. Yeah, and the Tarek is also one of the supports that they can't ban out if they do want to go for it. It does make them more of these team fighting behemoths the Team WE is building towards. And with the Kha'Zix ban, like, that is incredibly targeted when you're looking at the bans right here and you're like, okay, where's Gragas? because that's absolutely something that Ambition can still take. I mean, this is probably his best jungler historically this year, his most played as well over the course of spring and summer. The Gnar, which we saw be a big pick for Hooney and was what well, Cuvee brought back to the meta just before Rift Rivals. There's ultra comfort here in the second round for Samsung. Let's see how this Gragas performance for Ambition will size up the competition, because if it is the most comfortable, the most successful, the 27 pick, and it falters in game two, what could this mean for Samsung Galaxy? Team WE, final answer, and uh, the hot pot composition. You yeah. must complete the combo. <laughs> and it bridges the power gap so well as well. They have the rumble here, so now even early to mid game before two items, WE have a lot of potency. It is about as trademark as can be from Team WE, but Samsung have options. We saw yesterday the NAR versus Rumble matchup go well for the NAR, and although NAR is pretty standard and NAR coming back into the meta wasn't really about balance levels changing, the fact that QV goes very innovative with his builds, he's gone rapid fire, and he's built BF Sword on the uh, NAR in the top side. He is happy to really attack the split push pressure and then just be in there for the perfect NAR ultimate as well. Yeah, and I can't wait to see this game play out because yes, Jarvan Galu is a lethal combo, but we've also seen a lot of teams have success with NAR split push against a team that is trying to force 5v5 team fights. And Samsung has brought a lot of disengage. They have Janna and Gragas. They have also brought multiple pushing lanes that can be able to diminish the pressure and make it more difficult for Team WE to find these wombo combo fights. So I think it's a really high execution barrier on Samsung to prevent those team fights from coming across. But if a team's going to do it and a top laner's going to do it, it's going to be Samsung and Cubit. Oh, all the disengage to try and counter all of the engage. Oh, these fights are going to be so, so spicy. Uh, you can see the team comes on your screens. Gentlemen, I just want to give you a quick update because, of course, there is only one person on the planet with 100% perfect pickups. I want to remind you <laughs> that he picked Team WE oh, oh, okay. to win this series. So let's see whether or not Team WE can use this engage comp to get closer and keep the one true pop profits predictions alive. Get back to me with who we picked to win Worlds, because then we can just end the broadcast today. We don't have to worry about the bird's nest. <laughs> I'd rather not, because I'm quite looking forward to the bird's nest personally. But listen to Shanghai getting behind Team WE. We're standing in front of the crowd, and I tell you what, it is a wall of noise that hits you. So I want to get louder, Trevor. Team WE did talk about Worlds being in their home region was to their advantage, and they wanted to make use of it. Samsung, though, called it an insignificant advantage, and they're trying to work past it. It's all about honing in on the game at hand. The third seed from the LPL has come all the way from play-ins, and now in the semifinals, how far will their ride go? Mystic has already gone for a little ambush. Uh, there's no real juicy targets. I get a couple autos. Got him. And uh, damage advantage. Get those <laughs> DPM stats in your favor. I like the WE once again have a level one plan. Samsung were very passive on level ones throughout the majority of their games here at Worlds. So trying to find early aggressive wards to get information on a pathing. Always something you can do at level one and Twitch can usually stealth in and get a ward down himself. They have one ward over on the red buff here, so at least have some advanced information, whereas Samsung, they're much more defensive and they have no advanced vision on the pathing from Condi. 
Yeah, well, especially after what happened last game, I can understand the want for a defensive line. Uh, Samsung has this plan from before the game, from the draft phase. Cuve gonna shove up top side. Ruler as well with the Varus, one of the strongest, probably the strongest super meta AD carry. If you don't consider Caitlyn high in the meta, Varus will win lane against the Twitch and the Cog and all the other picks. So they're trying to push that in in the top and the bottom side. Kind of interesting to see the Varus go Relic Shield. It hasn't been as common recently for Varus in particular, who you think is going to put the hurt on in the laning phase. To me, it says basically that Samsung think the only way this lane can really turn is if the Ardent Sensor comes in faster for the Tarek and they have a disconnect like there was in game one. So they're trying to at least, at worst, I should say, equalize the Ardent Sensor races. See Ambition and Condi with a tete a tete. Cordy is roaming. There's a lot of support coming in. Condi now needs to get away. This is a three on two at best. Make that a four on two. Condi gets over the wall. Will there be any barrels to follow it up? Mountain Drake actually helps Condi, Ooh. pushing him out of the pit. And Condi lives to fight another day. Holds on to his flash as well, which can be so important. That reposition on the flag and drag. Top side, Cuvée. It's in Mega Nar, but the trades are pretty good for the Nar. Yeah, and a super interesting invade by Condi right there. A lot of times you go buff to buff with the Jarvan, but he may have been expecting uh, a little bit longer of a clear from Ambition, like a full clear blue side before going over to his red. The fact that he ran into him and then kind of opted into a bit of a trade was extremely dangerous. And Ambition's pathing was really interesting to track. He played multiple games on the same side of the map as Sejuani in the Longju series and was starting Talisman one game, Machete another game, vary up his pathing whenever he was invaded on, specifically around Raptors. He always had a plan to defend his Raptors. In this case, got the face check out of Condi, but not the flash he really did find. Yeah, not enough uh, pressure there to pick up the kill, but good reply from Samsung. Definitely roaming first. I mean, Crown first one to leave that mid lane. He's going up against uh, Shea's Galio, and you know, in the previous game, she had such a great casted and performance. I'll get back to that. Just yeah, to be oh, super easy first blood ambition. Just reads Condi like a book. And Condi was super greedy right there. He got hit by the Scryer's Bloom. Ambition saw him at Wolves. Condi could expect an evade coming up, and then just didn't respect the flash from Ambition. That was. I mean, as easy as an amazingly strong scout from Ambition, a great early game plan can be, the execution shouldn't have really happened. Condi should have accepted being pushed off of his buff because now it's a double buff. Gragas for Ambition who can take his Raptors. He's gonna push in, invade the Raptors, try to continue to track the jungle. We'll see Condi actually spot him as well. Ambition's flash is down. They're trying to pull something, but I don't even know if they can win the 2v2. All right, the flag and drag gets a knock up into the taunt. The CC's been chained. Flawlessly, he's out. The call of the void comes out. Flash for flash over the wall. Ambition still oh. 100 hit points to go through. Now Crown low on mana. He shot. can't do anything more. With the wall, passes the double buff. Shie gets the damage down onto Crown. And I started that story talking about Shie, and it ended with Shie. Wow, I am very surprised that they turned that one around, knowing Ambition was level four with double buffs against a level three Condi. But they pull it off, and that is absolutely enormous for the overall flow of this game. Ambition was about to run away with it. It was a really long passage of play. Like you say, Scryer's Bloom hits, Condi could leave, Ambition made the read that he was gonna be greedy, and that greed was punished. But what happened after this, that Gallia pushed out a mid, backed and warded, saw Ambition come and use his body slam onto the Raptors, knew the flash was down, and that's when they pounced. And I wanted to see Crown help this out faster. He was making sure to shove the wave in and didn't immediately start applying threat to Team WE. He got a lot of Voidlings down and nearly pushed them off, but Chie gets the cooldown up one more time. On top of it, they also get Crown fairly low and force another recall. Oh man, Chie now double buffs in the mid lane. Uh, talked about his cast and performance really popping off in game one of this series, I believe is what the cool kids are saying. But his stats are a little bit like middle of the pack. This is a mid laner who does what the team requires of him and is not necessarily the flashiest or the most statistically impressed. I completely agree, Trevor. He has a lot of intangibles, as you would say, that aren't necessarily reflected in KDA. You'd say the same thing about Ambition in some of his plays as they qualified here for Worlds. But what I really take from him is he's a smart player. He knows his role. Usually it is wave clear and be able to assist for Mystic in particular, but we saw him solo killing Jensen on the Jace when he tried to be the fulcrum of the early game mm -hmm. just a week ago. So he can morph himself, even if he's not a faker when it comes to being a household mid laner name. Absolutely agree. And in the bottom lane, Ben landed a Tarek stun onto Ruler to burn his barrier. So that lane that you were looking to Samsung to be dominant in uh, isn't necessarily getting that type of advantage as of yet. 
The only dominance here is a push advantage, and Moment Gia hits six, and if they can get any control wards on the bot side of mid lane, even pushing becomes pretty risky for the side of Samsung. So the inevitability of the 2v2 being a pushing lane and be a blessing and a curse. Well, the gold lead that Samsung have been able to pick up thanks to that pushing and thanks to some small CS advantages is almost all concentrated in ambition thanks to that kill. Uh, plus 500 over Condi. Thankfully for Condi, he got that reply kill and, you know, helped Shea out in that laning phase. Getting in that early double buff and just keeping TWE within touching distance, but they still are at a deficit. So let's see whether or not WE, how and where they can find those team fights, how and where they can find those engages. Because the onus is somewhat on them with this team composition to go forward, use the Tarek to job in the rumble and obviously follow it up with Gallo. Right, because one thing that Samsung has is they'll have that split push advantage with the NAR later in the game. Uh, and they also can find ways to initiate fights, in part because of the Varus, but also the Malzahar and the Graga. So a lot of tools that Samsung have given themselves to work with, that's one of the trademarks of them that can make them a bit more of a consistent team. So they aren't necessarily rushing this early game. What I really like is uh, the execution is what matters on the Samsung side. They've, they've got the ability to disengage. They've got the ability to set up engage. There's a lot more diversification, but it all comes down to decision-making and implementation. Let's see who's going to get ahead. Condi looking for Cuvee, who's got Flash available. Meganor. Meganor's coming very close, by the way. It's a sidestep down. Cataclysm's not even going to hold Cuvee in place, so pretty easy persuasion. Yeah, Condi was looking for the big play. He was trying to predict the leap or the Flash from Cuvee. Cuvee didn't bite on the prediction, so he saved both of his summer spells, and Condi just has to walk away. He saved his leap as well, so advanced techniques there. Holding onto the leap meant there was really no way that a Flash could be forced out. Like what you guys were talking about, specifically on the engage on Samsung's side, all of that engage can be used for disengage from Ambition, Ruler, and Core JJ especially. And from there, if QV can get big enough on this build, if he goes for a DPS build, he just showed a lot of work. Gallo's also not in range to all that stuff yet. He's trying to make it there, but Crowd is matching. 957's got teleport available. Shiei trying to cover the distance, but it looks like Crown has already got sort of the positional advantage in the river. The threat of the dive mitigated as Ambition backs away, but it's not over yet. It's usually very hard to break bot lane against a Galio team, so Samsung is playing this very slow. The dive is incredibly risky. That's when the Galio comes and turns it around, but if they get this early turret, it is huge for Samsung's ability to play the side lanes, and they're going to get it. Well, Mystic and Ben, they're just going to back away. Shea and 957, either not in position or not comfortable enough to try and defend. A tower first blood goes to Samsung. You don't normally see it with the Galio like you mentioned, but Malzahar specifically, we talked about the late game percentage damage. He actually has two ranged interrupts to the hero's entrance as well, just the regular silence on the Q and the suppression on the ultimate. Very hard to make the counter run. They don't have control over the bot side either, so had to respect the potential for collapse onto the Malzahar. And now the Twitch and Tarek pushed in, and the Varus unlocked them. 157 starts to overheat, gets good flame splitter damage on the Q-Bay, only before eating all of those autos of the boomerang and the hyper. 957 comes away worse for we still 10 CS down. Somewhat expected in the matchup though. A little bit difficult in those early phases, and Cuve is definitely one of the superstars of Samsung, has been for quite a long time. Yeah, but the thing to focus on in this graphic is the 0.17 KDA. They picked up one kill at the end, and I believe he was six deaths uh, in that game as well. His laning has been impressive. He's able to get the advantage with these winning matchups, but it's about what they can do after that. And this game, all of the matchups are winning for Samson. That's why I'm a big fan of the NAR, and I was the same when we saw two games from Hooney on the NAR yesterday, is you do straddle the line from being lane dominant to having back backup team fight options, and even build innovation like we mentioned earlier, which is going heavier on the AD and being a pure split push NAR. You can do a lot of things. He does have lane control, but it doesn't come at the cost of a late game team fighting tank. Well, the lane control has equated to 1,500 gold and the item advantage, gentlemen. Um, Arden Sensor, Marilla Nomicon, uh, Ninja Tabba for Ruler, making his way towards that Rage Blade, of course. So item advantage is here in favor of Samsung. If they want to look for any advantages or they can just keep playing the map, play the towers. There's a Mountain Drake available as well. So a lot of objectives to play around without necessarily putting themselves in a position where the team fight power of WB's composition will uh, make up for that lack of gold. Yeah, and you also have to ask, how is Team WE going to get enough control of the map to force the team fights? That's really where this game 
is going to try and reach its breaking point. So Condi's going to have to get some type of side lane advantage, whether he can get Ruler's Flash or Cubase Flash to start getting his advantages. Because as of yet, if he keeps making these empty ganks up to lanes, not getting any summoner spells, they're going to slowly lose this match. Mission once again showing his face down bottom. Mystic <laughs> was able to sneak his way out. That ambush obviously not being spotted. And that means WE, now they're going to be defending the inner turret of the bottom lane. Where is the minimap? There's no movement yet. Condi's going to be here late. That's a lot of damage going down. And you can see Crown is there to cut off Galio if he chooses to come. Oh, Already so good by Samsung. There's nothing that Xie can do. No, there's not at all. However, 957 can join the fight. Teleport comes down. The Flag and Drag Flash gets the knockup on Zerula, and the Cosmic Radiance will land. Oh. That's not going to be enough of a monsoon. And Call J Chase, the first of the fight. That's a flash forward for Zerula. They've shot inside. Ruler's now running for his life to Shea with the winds of war. The flash, the Duran taunt, that gets another. This fight's getting messy as the Dazzle sets up a stun for Ben to set up a Crowd's kill. Here. The three-man body slam from Ambition. And now everybody turns their attention to the crowd. He's going to get dropped, taken down, and Team WE trade four for two. It was just like the teleport play that got them back into the series against C9 at 20 minutes. Earlier here, the rumble comes in, the flag drag into Flash from Condi to force the fight, equalize to start it, and they decimate Samsung across the board. And it was such a close fight, even so. It's so difficult for Team WE to actually get the fights that they want, but not only do they get the kills, they've also burned every single flash on Samsung, which means the next fight for them is easier to force. We'll get a replay soon, but the start of it looked so good for Samsung when they were cutting off the Galio from joining. The rumble, though, and he has one at his turret. He comes in, equalizer onto Ruler, and things look good for W. Yeah, and also having the Taric ultimate at the right time and focusing core JJ primarily. I do have to question a little bit the Galio ultimate target selection by Shea not going for Mystic's Twitch as he was getting focused at the back of the fight. But the chase at the end, very pivotal. Everyone getting so low with the Taric, but he has AOE abilities on all those heals and shields, and they fully commit onto Crown to make sure he can't get a kill. Nar may have been strong, may have been farmed, but he came in in mini Nar form. When the fight is started by WE, Samsung need a bit more setup time compared to Galio and Rumble, who can have instant impact. The instant impact was felt, and Samsung fell down. And we talk so much in the group stages about the way Team WE focuses in team fights, and I thought for them it was more pronounced than anyone else. They focus support, then AD carry, and that's why Mystic had the largest damage per minute difference amongst him and other AD carries because other AD carries were not finding success against Samsung. So watch specifically this game. If Team W can kill Core JJ and put Equalizer on top of Ruler, they eliminate a lot of the damage threats on Samsung's side. It is very difficult to pull off though as Samsung has so many threats. And of course it also removes all that disengage power. Uh, that Monsoon didn't do a lot, just bought some time for JJ. We saw set up for Ambition waiting in the wings of that tri-bush, and while Team WE are dealing with their blue buff, Condi's backing up the duo lane, and WE hold on to the top outer turret is still an advantage for Samsung. Samsung is still continuing to push and pressure, but a great team fight win for WE. They've got the gold also into Shea's hand, so the man you want on the front line, keeping Mystic and, and uh, 957 alive and distracting Samsung, He's getting as tanky as you can. And it's so delicate for Samsung to play this sort of play style. They try to poke onto turrets. They don't have Rage Blade yet. So they don't really have backup team fighting options, even with Ardent Sensor complete. But because summoners are down, they can't stay for extra minion waves to try to take down this top lane turret with the Jarvan lurking around top side. They have to back out. They do pick up their item. But there's always windows to punish when Varus has flash on cooldown. Exactly. And there's still so much to play in this game. Cuve hasn't even popped his cull yet. And Team WE, I feel like, has already had to make what one game-saving team fight. The fact that they were able to teleport in and get those kills kept them in it. But Samsung can continue to build on these advantages. is gonna pop his cull. He's gonna have a larger split push advantage. Ruler will be able to find some fights with Rage Blade, and his flash will be back up again. So Team WE still in a pretty difficult spot, but have made it this far. All right, does Ruler and Koja J bite the bait? Condi we don't know if he's recalled. There's the vision toggle. The engage oh comes down onto Ruler. Also gets the hero's entrance from Shield. Him. But the Cosmic Radiance has already been thrown down by Ben. The attention gets focused onto Ruler. Nether Grass holds Shea in place. 
Oh, well, the Void goes out as well as the Void Swarm. Those little crabs are looking for blood. Condi forced to run defensively. Samsung survived the engage. Body Slam comes up from oh. that vision. Condi's knocked backwards. He's got no flash available. And Ruler gets his first of the game. So they, they pick up a kill here, Trevor. But look, mid lane as well. Nar is pushing up the minion wave. So they're winning in two spots at the same time. And they just didn't have the damage to kill him. There was the Janna who they didn't focus immediately, which is what they have excelled at before. That's why you have to kill the Janna first the monsoon the shield the barrier keep ruler alive crown roams up and that's the pressure game that samsung was waiting to be able to play look at that gold spike 3000 and nearly taking the mid turret as well they're also going to get rift herald so that's just the charge alone should take down that mid after turret that's why when you spoke before about a team a game saving team by the 12 minutes it sounds weird to say but with the draft that uh, samsung has the inevitability of the checklist being hit the ruler being rotated on the Varus and taking turrets. It felt like the game was already getting away earlier. That's why W made their second proactive move. But like you say, instead of focusing for JJ, they use everything on Ruler who has barrier up. Heal was up, the turnaround start, and in all of this, Nar is already in the mid lane. Exactly, Nar is in the mid lane. The Rumble doesn't have teleport at the very start of that fight. Looks like he gets it uh, by the very end of it. And then Ambition has a very well-aimed ultimate. Doesn't have flash oh. before this. The full range knockback onto Condi after he'd already flagged and dragged away to get that kill. During the course of the fight, Mystic was sitting around at 1,400 gold. Ruler had that rage blade, so disadvantage in items. Mystic has spent that since. Picked up the uh, Runon's Hurricane. 957 got himself in the Andrews, but WE, 3,000 gold down as we approach 20 minutes. Black Lever for Cubay. He's got that cult bonus gold. And WWE might just be gifted this mountain break. There's no one to contest. So you see Samsung picking on to top side. WWE taking down Drake's actually always something to narrow in on because traditionally yeah. they are the lowest priority team when it comes to Drake. Famously, get Mystic two items, hit those gold marks, even if you trade down a little bit. If you get your AD carry the gold early, which turrets and minions provide, then you're doing your job. So I think Samsung are very happy, happy to opt into these sort of trades. It's definitely out of character because this is going to allow Samsung to get a turret trade for Mountain Drake, which will be deferred power. And uh, Team WE, I feel like, need to find the Jarvis. Galio fights uh, sooner rather than later, although the Twitch in the very late game does have a late game win condition based on performance. It's just uh, not what we're used to seeing at a Team W, and you can see the pressure that they may have been able to defend against that they lose by going for that mountain drink. Oh man, Samsung aren't even done yet. They're going for the inner mid turret. New Wave is going to make its way up fairly soon. Use those crabs at least. They're looking for a flank, but they're out of sync right now, and Cubay could still match with Teleport, so just a lot of turret damage in mid lane by Samsung. Look at the gold lead now, 5,000. Out of almost nowhere, but there was standing gold before. Thought the game was slowing down by one great TP play, but another one answers it. This is what Samsung picked for. It's very delicate to pull off a comp like this. Another turnaround fight, and maybe it's all over. A bit of damage oh. not just here, but it's all about that inner mid lane tower. Yeah, that definitely was the case. Chain of Corruption prevents any further follow-up. Tower falls 5-0 to zero now in favor of Samsung Galaxy, and they've got absolute control of the top half of the map. Yeah, and this is with Team WE pulling off that advantageous fight in the bottom side. The wave pressure has been relentless from Samsung. The way they have bounced back from the game one where they really lost control of everything. Ambition getting first blood helps enormously. Mystic will be able to pick up this one turret, but now Team WE is in full defense mode and Baron is up. On the one bright side, if WE can find Samsung in a choke point, Galio, Job, and Rumble can make up a large chunk That's of that. Dream. A large chunk of that 5k, but that is then dependent on getting through Janna and Kragis in the distance. And I love that point because usually when it's 5,000 gold at 20 minutes, you're like, well, you can't fight, you're getting pushed around, you're in a really bad spot. There is no effective gold lead when you get a perfect equalizer layered into a spray and wave. Everything goes exactly as mentioned by WE. They can still win a fight, but finding the right fight, actually being invited to a fight that Samsung also opt into, is pretty damn tricky to do. And I really like the early redemption out of Core JJ because we've already seen how uh, the damage is a little bit delayed when Team WE go in for this. So even if Core JJ does die, he can still redemption the equalizer to help equalize the fight, so to speak, just getting everyone's health back up so they can win later with the deferred Malzahar damage throughout the duration of the fight. So Team WE, where are you going to find this miracle fight? Um, how long can you defend before Samsung? 
can just keep using this Cube split push power, getting tankier as well to complement that Black Cleaver. Just play on the side lane, and 957 is going to have such a difficult time. Going to be playing wave clear duty. Cannot afford to overextend either because QPL just run him down. While I'm quick to compliment Ambition, one area where his game may fall apart is those old man mechanics. The Baron Smites are not normally that on point by Ambition, and Condi is known for his Baron Steals. If you opt into the wrong fight, somehow Samsung are caught behind the Baron, and the AoE Wombo comes down. The Baron is stolen. There is still a fight that WE uh, wins around there, but it's really going to be more about control, probably, for Samsung than actually starting the objective. Exactly. Look at the minion waves. That's the story of this game right now. As long as all of them are pushed into Team WE, Samsung is in control of this game. I love that you mentioned the uh, Baron stealing from Condi. Team WE find themselves in situations where they need to steal a Baron to stay in the game more often than maybe they would like. Juve goes in for a full combo onto 957, and that's as expected, because this should unlock the tower. But you kind of have flashbacks of that Fnatic versus RNG game too, where the Baron still brought RNG back in. Already we see on screen, 957 losing trades to Juve. Starting the Baron is probably the only way Samsung can decide to lose. But trying to go for it. Condi's looking for the fight. Samsung has split up. This could be good. Rula gets a lot of shields and heals. The Radiance is interrupted by the Monsoon. But a beautiful equalizer. That's the first, the second. Now Mystic is looking for support, trying to chase down Ambition. Ambition's holding on to his flash and WE. The kills will buy some time. Condi is so clever. Sneaking through and then being able to pull the trigger and also how the initiation was desynced around Core JJ, being able to find him after he's cast his monsoon. But what happens after? They got two kills. Ruler and Core JJ are almost back up. They haven't even gotten control of the Baron Pit. Getting objectives with one of these Wombo comps needs more than just two kills when all the lanes are pushing against it. But this was picture perfect. There's a reason that WE are known for their team fighting prowess. There was some really small things here, apart from just the layering of CC that worked well for WE. But like you say, Jat, we reset. They don't even really clear out wards around the Baron. They have to do this again and again. Like, what is this fight worth in the end of the day? It's 900 gold and a flash on the Janna. They need to be able to find so much more. Watching this, though, Condi's sitting on that one controller for a long period of time. The mid lane shows, so Crown feels very safe, but they pull the trigger, and it's just the Galio and the Jarvan at the start. So watch Ruler. He still has flash and barrier. Doesn't use them. He's ready to flash over the wall, but the equalizer both gets the enemies and means that Ruler has no outlet to flash to. He will die if he flashes. Dies with flash up, which I guess a small consolation, but everything perfectly synced for WE. You can see that equalizer damage, gentlemen. 957 <laughs> stealing the show. But as we mentioned, it is a delay. It is a, uh, it buys WE time. That 5,000 gold lead, you've heard the narrative so many times. It means less the longer the game goes. And of course, when WE find those narrow choke points, when they find those places to fight, they can overcome some of those challenges but it's still gonna take another 10, 15 minutes before it's really equalized and evens up the footing here. And Team WE wanna find a fight while the Janna flashes down right now. So they have a brief window to get some control over the Baron area, but you can see the respect they're giving as well uh, to the current power spikes of Samsung and Malzahar and Harris. And Samsung haven't always been super disciplined with how they play with a 4-1 advantage. Last game of group stage, they had a fed Camille who could 1v1 rumble. And it's like, under four JJ, there we go. It's Condi as well as the backup, the taunt comes wow. down, but they haven't got the kills. The healing is so good. Look at the suppression down into Mystic. He's gonna get shut down. Cosmic Radiant keeps him alive. There's still not enough follow-up damage. Somehow, WE are unable to find anything. QV saves the day, and Ruler turns it around. That Cosmic Radiance was so close to being game-changing. But Core JJ played that as perfectly as a flashless Janna can. He waited out all the CC, and because Team WE wasn't coordinated enough to threaten beforehand, they get wrecked. Watching for the turn here, though. The Baron steal potential is real. Cuba's just going to kill Condi. That would, that would stop. Well, Condi's running away with his life. Cannot flag and drag into the pit, and the son of Baron will be unable to help out his team now. One more house, not quite as exciting. And finally takes him down, Cuvee. Such a great turnaround, and 10,000 gold just shy of it.
in the lead for Samsung. I mean, this was all about close, but no cigar. WE go for their second big team fight. Feel like they need to make the initiation. The layering to start it was picture perfect. They have him on top of the Equalizer, but he gets off a full charge Monsoon and his level 11. And then the timing of Crown to Ultimate Mystic, the instant he opens up to prevent the damage from coming through onto them, allows the shields to change the entire time. And a suppression effect means no auto attacks. It means nothing can be done by Ruler, who even lived longer, but with his low health bar was always going to die. The big objective goes to Samsung. Equalizer does insane damage. 4,200, <laughs> even from behind for WE. They're now 9,000 gold behind because of all of it. Almost the perfect fight, but because those earlier objectives are gone to Samsung, they want more items, the Jarns didn't instantly pop, and they could reset the fight. Man, the level of team fights uh, in that sort of corridor, in that sort of situation, is crazy, and Samsung still pull it off. Both these teams are team fighting gods. Maybe Samsung struggled in groups, but they made most of their wins with 40 minute team fights for the majority of the past two years when their form started to turn in summer of 2016. So while the picks aren't as obviously late game scaling, they can make them work. And with the Baron now a 9,000 gold lead, they just set up shop and dare Team WE to fight them again because they have shown that you can try and do that Jarvan Galio combo, but you have to be so perfectly coordinated, otherwise Samsung will kill you. And then even if you kill Ruler, Crown and Cubey are enough diversified threat that they can get through it. Yeah, so Samsung are making fight. this Galio Jarvan combo look mortal, but they're trying again. All right, let's take yeah. a look. There's the Monsoon to buy some time. Cosmic Radiance will land, and that will keep Condi alive a few seconds longer, but Ambition six around on the front line. Crown is bouncing the Malefic Visions from target to target, and Cube gets himself a double kill from 0-6-1 in game one to 6-1 and 3. Cube's Gnar has taken over this game, and Samsung are setting up on the Nexus. Just another picture-perfect fight for Samsung in dealing with that combo. Everyone able to withstand the burst. They're going to win 28 minutes in. They absolutely will. Condi and Shie running for their lives. The Nexus is focused down, and Samsung Galaxy, even the series one to one. Not often do you see two back-to-back -back fights with perfect CC layering, and yet both of them are losses. But when you play the map as well as Samsung could in this game, equalizers and cataclysms be damned. The, the re-engage and the ability to disengage fights, the Janna in particular, when not focused down, like the first big team fight of the game, reset fight after fight, and Samsung won them all. And even though this series is now at 1-1, with Team WE getting the Cassidy and Shen split push and an even faster victory than 28 minutes, I feel like this win might mean a little bit more for Samsung because Team WE took their best shot. They got Jarvan Galio and Twitch and Rumble and Tarek. They got all of that team fight Wombo combo, even got team fights and still lost. So when they go back to the drawing board of what they can do next, they're going to be hesitant to pull out that combo again. And as the best of five, goes on and as the draft becomes more and more complex, that's something that doesn't change. They lost with this combo. When we talked about Samsung Galaxy, after the Longju win, we said they kind of downloaded Longju. They knew their tendencies, they beat them with them. This was classic WE, we said it in the draft, yep. and Samsung were ready for that. They won 3-1 comp with the Cass and with the Shen, that was a big difference, they played it before, but it's not the standard WE, couldn't download that one. That's why it's so fun, because I feel like Game 3 will confirm the download or show that maybe WE has more tricks they just haven't had to show. Galio plus Jarvan was 7-2 and two coming into the day. Now it is 7-3. and three. Let's Ooh. send it to Dash and the Analyst. <laughs> Their thoughts on how Samsung gave it the third loss. <laughs> Thank you very much, Quick Shot. And while J4, Galio moves to 7-3, and three. Jana moves to 41 and 15. Even more OP. 15 before that. Yeah. Hey, but hey, both of these teams here come out with different looks in game two. This time, Samsung get the better of WE. Exactly. The most important part of the difference of this draft and the last draft, we talked about a lot of the power picks weren't traded. A lot of the questions weren't answered. This time around, both of them you know, were trading power in different areas, and it came so much more down to the in-game uh, you know, execution. Janna is given over as the first pick, but then, as they said, you know, you're able to get this combo uh, for Team WE. Samsung, though, they still kept focus, and they were able to get the answer to the Galio with the Malzahar that we've seen over and over for this tournament, and critically, the super strong bottom lane for them. You know, the Varus is a comfort pick for uh, Ruler. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like, you're looking at this WE comp, and you're like, oh my god, that team fight is terrifying, but 
Samsung had ways to deny the team fight from them, at least until they're very far ahead. They have a winning lanes bot. They have a pushing lane top even with the NAR who can get advantages there. And the Malzahar, this is a great answer to the Galio. So when you draft these winning lanes, when you're putting pressure on your opponents, it makes it so hard for them to actually be able to group up and find those team fights because anytime you go for an opportunity, you're going to be losing turrets elsewhere. You're going to be taking damage on the other side of the map because the minions are already at your objectives. Yeah, I just want to say that they were six to one in turrets before you know you really got to see yep. the wombo combo come through. It's true. Uh, I, I just really like both drafts. Like it's rare. I kind of go into Deficio it. Like, approved drafts. Like, I like it. Then let's get into some fights, huh? Because yeah. we got a few to look at here. Twelve minutes in, WWE taking the initiative, four for two in the bot lane. And they're in a really tough spot at this point. It kind of felt like Samsung was going to run away with the game. Q was doing great on top side, and obviously the very first replay here is uh, Condi. Who's uh, deciding? What do you give Condi out of 10 on this play, Kobe? That's actually a zero, okay? <laughs> because he knew that there, Gragas had vision on him. The plant leaves the little spores around He was sparkling. He, he knew he, it. He was sparkling, and then he also sees the Gragas come at him, start the body slam, and he had flash up, but, you know, he wants and to... And he baited me as well. I <laughs> thought it was going to be a big flash of team fight, but it's just Condi. So did I, but we're checking to make sure we have that replay. If we have it, right. then we'll pull it up. But, oh, we can but, Condi dying again. Again. but before we do it, let's set up then these two compositions and the way they want right. to interact, right? Because, uh, you know, again, looking at the J4, the Galio, the Rumble, there's a very specific way that Team WE wants to take a fight. Yeah, so the entire idea is that Condi on the Javan is the one who engages into the back line of Samsung, and then you have a Galio ulti that follows, you have a Rumble ulti that comes down, and then all the focus is on that big circle in the middle where Galio flies in, while Twitch is kind of unnoticed and can then sneak in position to open up and hit two to three guys also in the back line. That's what's supposed to happen. But again, it's all relying on basically all five members have perfect synergy when they do this. And if one guy's out of position or not there, it kind of falls apart. And it is what we saw at 12 minutes in the bot lane. Unfortunately, we don't have that fight. So I'm going to push us forward four minutes to the top lane where WE perhaps, you know, kind of incentivized by that one bot lane fight, try the very same thing here in the top lane. This time though, Samsung Galaxy have the response. And Gandhi does go in here and they uh, try and take down Ruler right next to Janet. We got to see the knockback here, the disengage they're talking about. Critically, one of those key components that Fischio was talking about, the extra damage from the Rumble Ultimate, isn't here. So at this stage in the game, they don't have enough damage to push through. And this was like a huge play for Samsung because they just lost that big fight before this year. And it looked like like a W were getting back in this game. But if you are Samsung as well, you're kind of hoping that your support gets to redemption as fast as possible. You hope there comes in some magic resist items where Wits End was in there. Janna was also building towards a locket. And suddenly you start having some resistances against you know, the Galio and the Rumble. And honestly, in that top lane play, when you're going that all in under the turret, I was actually surprised that they didn't TP the Rumble in because he had that available during the entire fight, even when they're starting to get chased back to their base, because you talked about how it has to be everything at the same time, and right, and that is really what we didn't see come to fruition, especially when you are down on gold. Everyone needs to hit the same target, or Jana heals through it with the ultimate, with the redemption, with the shields. And if you don't kill someone in that initial burst, the rest of your team fight is pretty crap. And we saw a couple of times, even when the rumble is there, you have to account for the small displacement from the Galio ultimate as well, because a couple of times the key priority targets are right next to a rumble ultimate and not actually burning. And funnily enough, even though only one kill comes through in that engagement, we quickly saw three turrets go down in favor of Samsung yeah. Galaxy, along with a Rift Herald. So the gold really started flying flooding in and to that end we saw WE make one more stab at perhaps taking the game with a team fight this one's going to come 25 minutes in Samsung Galaxy to turn it 3-0 this one brought to you by Acer Predator and it's important to highlight how close these fights are because here we get engaged with the Javan the Rumble Ulti the Galio now Kobe did mention that maybe they get pushed out of this Rumble Ulti or some of them we even get the Twitch who sneaks in from the side and this is like moments away from being the perfect fight for WE but then there's no QSS on Mystic he gets instantly ulti by Crown and suddenly Cubic comes back as well and actually stops anyone from dying. Yeah, you sneak up on a Malzahar, you're gonna get Malzahar ulted <laughs> as the AD carry that is yeah. isolated. And then you talked about, oh, someone keeping their eye on this Twitch in the back line and having him be unseen. Well, Cube just makes a beeline right for him. For sure, and it, it's that's why it's so much about the timing, right? If that Twitch had been opening about two seconds earlier when the Galio's still on top of the Malzahar, yep. that cannot happen. Maybe the Malzahar, if the Rumble ultimate's placed a little bit better, he's still cooking in that while he's CC'd up, the Twitch opens up. That is a fight that can lead to Baron. 
and then it's very likely a WE game. That could put it back in their favor. Exactly, and that's why I said I like both drafts, because I feel like WE, even despite losing this quickly, had some of those big fights where we're talking just a few seconds, like it goes off, and then bam, it goes the other way. And I really liked what Samsung side lanes did in this game because they, yes, in the draft they were able to set up, you know, these possible winning scenarios here. Nar, you know, QV definitely deserves a lot of credit into the Rumble because okay. they actually had J4 visiting this matchup, and this can be a very Rumble favored matchup, especially early with jungle pressure. Yet he's able to scale up super well on this Nar, and the bottom lane does get the snowballing going for the team. And I thought his build was actually really intelligent to play around that, right? He knew that he could be vulnerable early, so he goes Cal, then into the Black Cleaver, then Fish is adaptive before he goes to the Frozen Mallet. So, you know, building more to survive and sustain in that matchup. And then he was able to actually take over in the later team fights. And this is why we looked at Cuba as one of the big shining lights on Samsung. It is a team where you don't talk about massive superstars who's making big flash of plays all the time, but if there's one man who will do it, it is Cuba. And yesterday, right, we were looking at Huni, SKT, one of the few teams that definitely does look to play around their top laner. Samsung Galaxy at times has been known to do the same. Both of these teams finding success in this tournament, whereas others are still very much indexing towards that bottom lane. Real briefly, moving on to game through, WE back to blue side. What are we thinking here is the response? Because you say you're happy with both drafts. We can honestly just run it back, right? And just see who executes yep. better this time around? I think a little bit more early game focus towards the bottom side of the map because in the pregame for this entire series, we talked about, yes, in the past, WE have been able to kind of limp through the early game with the losing bottom lane and still, uh, you know, bring Mystic up to this level to carry the team fights. But this was too much. As I said, six to one in turrets is a, such a big gold deficit to try and come back from. Yeah, I'd just love to see them have the pushing bottom lane, see what they can get done with the advantage because that bottom lane is such a strength for WE. WE gave up too much early. Samsung Galaxy adapted in game two to tie the series. We'll see what team WE can break out in game three after the break. Mission, still oh. hit points to go through. Now Crown low on back, he can't do anything more. Wins of war, passes the double buff, the flash, the Duran taunt, that gets another. This fight's getting messy as the Dazzle sets up a stun for Ben to set up a Crowd's kill. Here. Three mad body slap from Ambition, and now everybody turns their attention to the crowd. He's gonna get dropped, taken down, and Team WE trade four for two. Good job, good job. Okay. Hadi yata, çubuğun ağlarsa. Tamam, tamam, tamam. There's the monsoon to buy some time. Cosmic Radiance will land, and that will keep Condi alive a few seconds longer. But Ambition sticks around on the front line. Crowd is bouncing the Malefic Visions from target to target, and Cube gets himself a double kill. Samsung Galaxy, even the series one to one. Predator takes you to the edge. Summon your strength.